if you have an antenna on your roof, it should be grounded. This one is, but the roof is being switched out to metal, and currently the lead and ground cables go across the roof to the other side, down to the ground rod, and we can't have the wires on the metal roof just because they'll scrape the paint off and everything. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna run the ground and antenna lead off the backside down this way, thereby eliminating that huge run over the metal roof. Problem is, we need a ground rod installed. So uh, that's gonna be our challenge for today. For this project, we're gonna be using an eight foot long, five eighths of an inch thick ground rod, UL approved. We're also gonna be using a five eighths inch grounding clamp that's gonna attach to this rod and will hold our cable. We're gonna to try to drive this in with a Milwaukee SDS Plus ground rod driver. It's five eighths of an inch and it's about 10 inches long. The driver itself is a Ryobi model P223. It is a drill driver and we're setting it on hammer mode. We're also going to be using a pair of synthetic leather gloves or whatever kind you like. This is a Stanley S77611 and I would recommend some hearing protection. And the last thing is this container of water. It's going to serve two purposes quenched my thirst, and two, we're gonna see if it helps with getting the rod into the ground easier than just using the hammer drill alone. With all the tools gathered, I've even added a ladder just in case I need it, because you may need to get to the top of that eight foot rod and ladder would help. Oh, by the way, you notice I put the clamp on the rod because uh, if the top gets deformed, at least the clamp will be on and it'll be easier to uh, have it on than to try to slip it on after you deform the top. That is if the top of the rod deforms. Anyway, so the first thing I did was just poke around. We've had a lot of rain here. So I'm looking for a soft spot because this area is also known for having lots and lots of rocks. And right now, I'm just turning by hand and um, I've dropped probably about a foot, foot and a half. <clears throat> and about another six inches. And this is all just me turning. I'm not even using that fancy synthetic glove yet. And now it's to about, oh, probably five feet. So we've driven three feet in simply by hand and just turning and applying no water because I've seen that as a method and I think we're getting to the point where I'm going to apply a little bit of extra force so I'm going to move the clamp down so it's out of the way when I uh, put the driver on top of that and we'll see what, how that goes. You may notice that as I apply the hammer drill to the ground rod, the grounding clamp actually rides down the rod. But during that time, the rod has actually gone into the ground about a foot. The thing I noticed was that even though the movement was very small and subtle, to me, at least on video, I can actually see that movement. When you're actually doing it, you don't feel much progress. What I did feel was my finger tightering on the trigger since I was actually still pressing above shoulder height. As the unit went down further, I was actually able to apply more force, but haven't noticed much difference between letting the drill driver do the work and my trying to assist by pushing down on it. The progress seems to be about the same. Now, occasionally would pause to add some water, move the rod around to help the water penetrate into it, that sort of acts as a lubricant. I've seen some people actually just use water only to get their grounding rod into the ground. And in this case, that wasn't enough. So I'm using some water and the drill hammer. By the way, the purpose for using a ground rod and grounding your antenna 
is not to avoid getting hit by lightning because if it takes a direct hit, it's going to be vaporized regardless of whether or not it was grounded. But what it does do is it eliminates static buildup on the antenna system. And that lessens the chances of it getting struck by lightning, but doesn't eliminate it. Also, if you already have a ground system with your electrical service, then you need to tie in this second ground rod to that. And code also requires that the two rods must be a minimum of eight feet apart. For this video, we're just simply installing the ground rod. We'll tie them together at a later point. Getting tired of the slow pace of the drill hammer, I switched over to an eight pound sledgehammer and I could quickly see that progress. Of course, you know, there were times where I missed the rod and that wasn't too much fun. So after a while, I gave up on that went back to the drill hammer, made some more progress, finally came back to the sledgehammer to do the final leveling out, and I just drove it just an inch or two above the top of the soil, and that's where I'm leaving it until we uh, connect our cables to it. After several minutes of using the hammer drill, the sledgehammer, and using water, we finally get the ground rod where we need it, now it just waits for the day that I bring down the wiring to it. But this just goes to show you that sometimes it's not just one solution. It all depends on the type of soil and what's in it. We're um, in the south, so it's kind of clay and lots of rock where I'm at. We fortunately did not hit rock, but uh, it got a lot harder as we went further in. and. Uh, I think without the sledgehammer, this would have been a much longer process. Though eventually I think that hammer drill will have done it. It just was slow. The good thing about the hammer drill is it gets you going pretty much into it. But as you saw when I initially started, I was just doing it by hand. And again, this soil is fairly wet, at least the first couple of feet, because we've had lots of rains recently. So hopefully that helps you if you're trying to install a ground rod several different types of solution. You can try just pushing it in by hand and just lubricating it with some water to help it go through. And if you pull it up and down, you can actually just force the water in there and hopefully that'll work for you. If not, either a hammer drill, a sledgehammer. Hammer probably won't have enough weight to do it. You definitely need the oomph of a sledgehammer. I think this one is probably eight to 10 pounds. Anyway, if you found this interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team, and as always, thank you ever so much for watching.